Okay, so everyone loves a good road trip. Well, we love the idea of a road trip, but once you have kids and things, it can be a little bit difficult. Uh, in reality, hours in a car driving to your holiday destination can be a little bit boring and quite irritating too. Travel journalist Debbie Griffiths is back in the Harvey Normal Lounge with her tried and tested tips to plan the perfect road trip. Good morning. Good morning. So you're a fan of road trips? Well, I never used to be because I was the kid in the back seat with the bowl. I got really queasy and motion sick on oh, car yeah. trips. Hey, I've got a test for you. I've got already got a tip for you. Oh, go. I've got two vomiters yeah. in my family. Oh, no, we yes. take an ice cream container because then when you're doing it on the killer, there's nowhere to pull over. They can put the lid on it yes. and put it down. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I've discovered that one. Anything that covers it and you can yeah, tip it out sometime <laughs> later. <laughs> exactly. It's horrible. Well, my nine-year-old gets sick now as well, so I've had to come up with a lot of strategies to cope. And I'm a big believer that the journey should be as good as the destination, as much fun as you can make it anyway. Are you? Good luck with that. So how do you prepare them? <laughs> well, I start weeks in advance because I love the fact that... You know, you've, you've scrimped and saved for this holiday. You don't want it to be that long. You want it to be that long, yeah. you know? So we get the maps out on the floor and we have a look at where we are versus where we're going. Because I think that's really great for the kids to learn about geography and where we are in the world as well. And we also hop on the computer to check out activities and to learn a bit more about the destination as well. So the kids get really involved, they take a bit of ownership of what we're going to be doing on the holiday. And then what I do is I hop on the computer, it takes me about half an hour to come up with a wee map here. This is called the Landmark Game. Oh my okay. goodness Debbie, you're so organised. I made it up. It takes me about half an hour to uh, print out the map and then print out some landmarks that we're going to see along the way. Now this has three benefits. Firstly, my nine-year-old is now looking out the window and not in, so he's looking at the horizon so he doesn't feel so queasy. Less vomiting. Absolutely. It also stops those, are we there now? Are we there now? Well, you can see we're obviously not there now, okay? <laughs> so it takes, it lets them know how far along in the journey we are. And it just starts those conversations like, oh, what is that park with the rocket in it? Oh, let's talk about that. Or what is that big factory over there? So it gets some conversation going yeah. as well. If all else fails, uh, we have sea legs, okay? So sea legs tablets are dissolvable on the tongue for kids six years old and up. I swear by them, I still take them even when I travel now. Snack packs, some ointment and some rugs and they're set to go. And we have a good trip. That sounds like a really good idea. And there's so many games you can play too. Yellow car's always a good one. Yes. It involves punching people though, so uh, maybe not so much. Not so much. Um, and also, <laughs> I have the one where I just look at horses. Every time I see a horse, I say, horse I won. And it's a great game because I always win it. Magic. I'm so what, it. what about your favourite trips? Where do you like to really go? I have a favourite uh, road trip that we did years ago, and I still rave about it. It's Auckland all the way up to Hokianga Harbour. So you go up through Waipawa Forest, and um, heads up, it's a little bit like this, OK? So you've got to stop and see Tani Mahuta because it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Hokianga Harbour itself is gorgeous. We stayed at Copthorn when we were there, so you look out over the dunes and over the harbour. Not a lot of other stuff to do there. We did go on the boat over to Kohu Kohu. Which, and we saw the oldest bridge in New Zealand as well. Not quite what we were expecting, but you have to go and see it. And <laughs> other than that, we made our way back along through Bay of Islands and then back to Auckland. And that was a really great road trip to do. Beautiful, winterless north. What about if you want to head south? Okay, south, go down to Waiuku. This is a nice short one. Waiuku, out to Karitahi Beach. Stay at Castaways Resort because it looks out over the western horizon. It's gorgeous. The next day, what we did is we actually went up through the Afitu Peninsula and we did sand dunning at Hamilton's Gap and we went right up to the top to the Manukau Heads Lighthouse. Now this one is one of the very few in New Zealand you can actually go up and around the top and see for miles. You can actually see Sky Tower from the top there as wow. well. Wow. Yeah, and on the way back down we went to Graham's Beach and that's opposite Auckland Airport. So a really cool beach jutting out into the harbour there. So I loved Afitu Peninsula. I think people forget about it a lot and well, it's do. right there. They do and it's so close to Auckland as well and a lot of Aucklanders have probably never been there. Yeah, well worth a trip out there. You've inspired me. Thank you so much Debbie. <laughs> no worries.